You've seen a lot of reviews on the Lego Ideas Polaroid one-step camera, but do you know the history behind the Polaroid Land camera? We're gonna do a quick review on this set and we're going to discuss some of the history of how the Polaroid Land camera came to be, what it was used for, and why it became so popular. Coming up next. Well, this is the one-step uh, camera from the Legos Ideas uh, line, and you know what? It is absolutely fabulous and just reminds me so much of back in the day. Now, these one-step cameras, I know have been, have been reviewed by many, many people, so I won't go over all of the details, but if you just look at this, the way that they did this, the lines, the curves, all that sort of thing, everything looks just as it did on the one-step cameras. I mean, even the viewfinder, which is actually a working viewfinder, um, and the real cameras, uh, they had, uh, this was kind of like a rubber, and that rubber was tended to, it was easy to peel, and so a lot of people peeled them, a lot of pets bit them off, and all that kind of stuff, and so always had chunks and stuff. I'm not a big stud-averse person, but I do have tons of uh, black tiles. I think I'm gonna tile that in so the whole thing is tiled and stuff like that. But there's some really cool inner workings um, of this, including down here, um, where you can actually press this button and one of these pictures pops out. And there's the uh, film case uh, that the film came in, usually packs of 10, um, came in Polaroid uh, uh, ca uh, camera, um, and you could, you, could, you could put them in. Uh, the one-step camera was actually uh, a camera that was late in the game in terms of Polaroid. Um, Polaroid itself uh, was um, started by uh, Edwin Land back in the 30s and he came up with um, an idea to do polarized lenses for cameras and for glasses. And you think about, you know, nowadays we have uh, polarized, glass, po uh, polarized glasses and things like that. Um, and, uh, and, and at one point he thought to himself, I think it was when he was like on vacation or something, he thought to himself, uh, you know, I would like to be able to take instant pictures. Now remember, this was back in the 30s and early 40s um, when we didn't have cell phones and, you know, I mean, I'm taking this video right now on a cell phone as you can tell. Um, and uh, anyway, so we didn't have all that, but he, he knew that, that he was able, um, would be able to do this and, and just thought that, you know, this is something to, that he would like to do. Um, and so what he did was to come up with, um, a camera uh, that would print pictures instantly. Uh, and instantly was a relative term back then. Um, I think it was back in the, the mid 40s, something like that, um, when uh, um, the first Polaroid came out. Now this feature right here pops down, as you can see, and I've, ha I've popped it down, and you can see the rollers in here. And back there is where the film would be. And these rollers, um, one of the things that uh, Polaroid doesn't tell you and didn't tell you at the beginning when you first uh, when they first came out was they didn't use um, dry ink and so because of that um, there were chemicals and all kinds of stuff uh, that was used and so these rollers would become up become gummed up quite a bit there were some rubber rollers up here and I think Lego does a good job of uh, trying to simulate those right there then there were some rollers right here um, and you put all that on the camera uh, and you put your film in there you close it up and all that sort of thing um, and uh, it, 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 it then uh, you press the button and then out pops and I'm not gonna do it because I want you to and I want you to when you buy this I want you to feel the magic of it popping out and it would pop out and your picture would kind of be you know it, it would be you can see it's it's in two two ways right there's kind of a, a, a in the middle here there's some chemicals and some uh, reagents and some things like that um, but your your picture would start to fade in and pretty soon you would have pictures now one of the questions that was asked and has been asked is how come Polaroid pictures nowadays, and these aren't real pictures, these are Lego pictures, um, but how come Polaroid pictures nowadays aren't as good as the Polaroid pictures from way back in the day, um, back when I was a kid, uh, and, 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 and earlier than that? Um, the reason is because <laughs> they don't use the same chemicals as they used to. And one of the things that was interesting when you go through the history of Polaroid and you start to read about it and uh, look into it, and you also, and if you lived it like I did, um, at first, you really did. Remember, I think it was, uh, oh, who was it, Outcast or something that was like shaking like a Polaroid picture, right? Because at a certain point, 
um, at the beginning of the Polaroid land cameras, um, you did have to kind of shake it and dry it off because it was wet and there were wet chemicals there. And you could touch it and you could actually blur the picture. Um, I remember as a high school student, I was a photographer for the yearbook and the newspaper and things like that. And we had a, a dark room in our high school. And so we used to develop all of the film, or as my grandmother would say, film, which I never understood why she always said film. But anyway, the film, we had to, we had to, we, we produced the film and the pictures. And if you've ever done that, you've set this into a tray of chemicals and with a reactive agent, and all of a sudden the picture appears, right? And then you take it out and you hang it up and you dry it, and then you have a beautiful picture. Well, we don't use those chemicals anymore for the most part um, because those chemicals were very, very toxic and very caustic. As a matter of fact, the majority of those chemicals aren't legal anymore. Um, and so that's why you have the older Polaroid pictures that actually still look pretty good. Um, but uh, the uh, newer Polaroid pictures, eh, they don't look as good because they can't use the same chemical formula because it's illegal or they can't get their hands on the, those chemicals anymore because those chemicals just aren't made. So Polaroid, under the leadership of Edwin Land, who was their CEO for 40, almost 50 years, um, really took off. And here is an advertisement from the Boston Post a couple of days after Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, here it is, uh, the Polaroid Land camera. Imagine, finished pictures in one minute. Well, kind of. Um, it, 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 the, the, this ad goes on to say how exciting this camera was because it gives permanent, brilliant pictures of excellent, uh, excellent quality the minute they come out of the camera. Huh, it's magic. Snap, pull, tab, enjoy. One minute. Only $89.75. Now, think about adjusted for inflation. $89.75, how much that would be now. These were very, very expensive cameras. And as you can see, it was a snap. It was really easy. You didn't have to do much. Well, yeah, you kind of did have to do much. You had to do a ton of stuff to get this thing to give you a picture. You had to stretch out the film. You had to put the negative paper over top of the positive paper. You had to make sure the reactive agents were set up together. You had to put the, the cartridge in the right spot. You had to do certain things with the bellows. You had to extend the, the, the bellows out. You had to make sure you had dark, how light you wanted the picture to be, that sort of thing, your exposure level. Um, and then you had to tear it out of the camera and then tear it off of the camera. And then you had to take the positive image off of the negative image. And there you go. See how easy that was? Well, <laughs> it's definitely not as easy as our cell phones are right now, right? All we have to do is take a picture and we can print it in any handheld printer, um, you know, we can find. And we can do that for, you know, really cheap nowadays. Um, just for the cost of the printer and the paper, right? Which really is, is extremely cheap now. Um, but back then, look how easy it was. Well, it wasn't so easy now, but... This was a miracle back in the 40s. And when it came out, the fact that you could actually have a picture in your hand that you didn't have to go to a dark room and develop it with all of these chemicals and you didn't have to send it off to be developed to some chemical factory, some company, um, and you could actually have a picture in your hand within a minute or two. Now, you did have to shake it like a Polaroid picture back then because you wanted it to dry, right? But Edwin Land put the entire dark room into this little picture and, um, and you know, into the, into the format of a picture. And so you got your pictures immediately and it was, it was amazing. It was wonderful. Now this is a picture of the first, one of the first uh, Polaroid land cameras. Um, so it, it looked like 
most of the cameras of the 40s, right? I mean, it had the bellows on it. it. It, you know, folded up. So you folded it. So you kept your lens and all that kind of stuff. The inner workings of it, you kept it nice and, and protected. It had a hot shoe. So you could hook a flash up to it. In that time, flashes pretty much were like gunpowder and a reflective agent. I mean, that was, <laughs> this was not a very safe time um, in uh, photography uh, between, you know, the toxic uh, chemicals and, 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 and the flashing of you know the, the ex mini explosion that caused the flash bulb to go off and all that kind of stuff um, <laughs> but you could literally have a picture from this camera um, for what would we say 80, 85 uh, 70 85 75 or something 89 75 yeah so that's not a bad deal right now it did cost and so only those that had a lot of money could afford to have their pictures developed in minutes um, but the price soon came down and they soon, they soon started to develop cameras using plastic. And all of a sudden they developed all kinds of cameras using plastic. Now Polaroid was involved in everything by this point. They were involved in, um, in, in they sponsored NASCAR. They sponsored all of these different events around the country. Um, they actually were involved in a scandal that not many people uh, think about when they think of Polaroid land cameras. Um, but they were involved in a scandal dealing with apartheid. Um, because remember, you could take pictures of anything, right? Um, and I mean anything. And so uh, they, you didn't have to send it in to get it developed. Um, and so they actually were selling their cameras and their, um, th their, their film to the police and the military in South Africa. And they were using those, the police and the military were using Polaroid cameras to take pictures of and to document all of the black folk in South Africa. Um, in the apartheid system. And this was not looked at very well by the rest of the world. And two employees at Polaroid discovered this. They were a married couple and they literally developed a movement to boycott Polaroid and to make sure that Polaroid um, did not use their cameras for nefarious purposes um, and particularly um, did not want Polaroid being involved in apartheid. Now when a Polaroid, you know, this was a major PR issue for Polaroid, right? So they pulled out of, um, of South Africa and all the business there and everything and, and made it a point not to sell their cameras and their film to governments and, and military and, and police um, officers and things like this. Um, and, and so that was something that we don't really think about when we think about Polaroid cameras um, and that sort of thing. But that happened. And then that kind of went away. That was in the early 70s. That kind of, you know, people kind of forgot about that. And, you know, just the fact that you could still have an instant picture. Look at all these cameras that you had. I mean, they, they tried everything. Now, basically, they all did the same stuff. They all produced a picture that some of them were tiny pictures, maybe three inches by two inches. Some of them were big, bigger pictures, like maybe a, uh, I think the, the largest you could get was like a four by three or five. Maybe, maybe I don't think you could get a five by seven. Maybe you could get a five by seven in the big one. Um, Polaroid actually came out with one of the first digital cameras. And I remember I actually had a Polaroid digital camera. It took two pictures, two pictures, that's it. <laughs> the camera took two pictures and then you had to download them on your computer, which took probably eight days to download. Um, and then you had to kind of maneuver them and move. But but in that camera itself cost, I think it was seven hundred dollars in the early um, in the early or late 80s. I think um, it was it was it, it was it was a digital, but it was a digital camera. So Polaroid tried even Polaroid all, even even leased and sold some of their, their technologies to Kodak. And, and, and so Kodak used some of their technologies in their own stuff. Um, so Polaroid was huge. And at the pinnacle, um, you know, Polaroid made uh, five point, uh, or five and a, and a quarter uh, floppy disks um, and were a major producer of those. Um, but their camera business was the big deal, right? And so they came up with cameras that had auto focus. So you didn't have to worry about going back and forth manually and walking around and getting the right focus and stuff, and turning the wheel, that sort of thing in the front. Um, they had flash. Uh, uh, so, you, you know, you actually had a flash.
flash, electronic flash that was on the camera. Some of them had hot shoes. You could see a bunch of them folded up. I remember um, the one right here in the center of this picture, the bl big blue one. It was about three inches thick by about six inches. It looked kind of like a, an iPad mini, except for it was about three inches thick. And you'd pop it up and it would have an automatic uh, sensor in there and, uh, and do all kinds of stuff. My grandpa had one of those, I remember. He was a big uh, film aficionado. And so uh, whenever cameras came out, he was really big into the Polaroid cameras. Um, I think he even had one of those white ones there with the with the, the leather on the top that made it look a little more fancy. Well, I had this one. This was my camera, um, the Polaroid Swinger. Um, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't named for what you think it might have been named. Although, I have no idea. I mean, I guess you could take pictures of anything, but um, this was the camera that I had. And so they made these, it basically, you think of it, it's it's a camera with a bellows, except for the bellows is plastic, right? Um, it had uh, a, a flash on it. Um, the big button there at the top was one you pressed. You could focus it. Many of the Polaroid cameras had, they were set, the speed of the camera was set, um, your ISO and things like that. Um, this one, you could adjust a little bit. You you see the uh, the big uh, silver thing to the left here that popped open and that's where you put in the cartridge um, and uh, you see what the inside looked like um, just like that and so it was a basic camera I mean nothing fancy um, you can see the rubber up top there on the viewfinder that was a, a light seal to seal in um, your eye so that you could uh, um, you could you could see what was going on in the uh, viewfinder there and of course me having glasses it always smudged my glasses and this rubber up here was made in kind of a weird way and so if you had OCD um, you could always tell the people that had these cameras had OCD because they'd be picked apart this rubber just have little things picked off of them and pets for some reason um, like to chew on those my cat just chewed on those like crazy and I, I think mine kind of disintegrated for a while um, but you have your brightness buttons and things like that on here um, and so that was the camera that I had but it was called a swinger because it actually had a strap and so you put a strap on the side of it here and then you could swing it and that was in their commercials where they had people walking around you know in the 70s swinging the cameras and all that kind of stuff and uh um at least that's the way they marketed it <laughs> so the polaroid was a great camera it took pictures um you could see this is a camera this is one my grandpa had too the 660 um this is uh you know had auto focus had auto sensors light sensors flash the whole works really um really 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 cool uh cameras um you know major photographers were using these things um but then cell phones came into uh digital cameras cell phones those things came into existence that uh was the end of the polaroid business because they took pictures like this and <laughs> that's what a polaroid picture looked like sorry to the gentleman in that polaroid picture but that's what it looked like um, anyway, they took pictures like that, uh, and, and now we're familiar. This is the Lego version, obviously, of the One Step. Um, but this picture was taken with my digital, my camera, right? And so when the digital cameras came out and um, digital f and, and phone cameras came out and got better and better and better, um, the old Polaroid pictures that we were, uh, you know, the old Polaroid cameras uh, just couldn't cut it. And so therefore, uh, they um, kind of went the way of the dinosaur. Um, Edwin uh, uh, um, Land had, 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 had long since uh, um, left the company. The company was bought by several different people and different entities and investment firms and stuff. And then finally, somebody came back and said, hey, we want to reinvent or the, the one step and or you know reinstitute the one step and so they came out and they came up with the camera that lego has now built um in uh, lego form the one step um obviously the the the, the rainbow uh, logo stands for the colors of the of all the pictures and stuff the color pictures things like that um and so you can buy one steps now they're fun they're you know they, they they've marketed them um as uh, as as cool cameras um, and something you know that, that's that's a little bit different than your cell phone camera and all that kind of stuff. You get the picture right there. You don't need the printer in your hands, although printers now are about the size of cell phones. Um, so you know it, it's it, 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 they're fun cameras. They're great cameras. 
They're cameras that uh, that I loved when I was a kid. It gave me freedom um, to be able to have my camera here. This gave me the freedom to go out and take pictures, to come back and uh, and and to show my family what pictures I took. Um, you know, I had a lot of pictures that didn't turn out um, because of the overexposure. Uh, you know, things like that. But in this camera here, you actually had to pull the film out, and then you had to take the uh, the the negative from the positive, and and then and then shape it and dry it and all that kind of stuff so yes so anyway that is the polaroid land camera by lego um the lego version i'll leave it here with that uh and uh, it's a great little camera you know if you have nostalgia for a polaroid camera i would encourage you going out and buying this lego uh version it works perfectly with the lego atari and uh i have a 70s room set up with a lot of different types of uh um, things from the 70s and and very mid-century ish um because that's the way i grew up as a kid this is a great addition to it. Um, I would encourage you, if you really like the Polaroid cameras, go out and get a real one. Um, they're fun, they're quirky. Uh, nowadays in the, in the, in the days of, uh, of cell phone cameras and, and what we can do with technology and stuff like that. But with that said, please like this video, share it if you're so inclined, and um, come back again because we're gonna keep posting more videos on the Dr. McBrick channel. So this is Dr. McBrick, signing out.